Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's give God a hand praise and glory on today. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We welcome those joining by Facebook, later by YouTube, the Lord's House of Prayer, Sincere Milk of the Word, Sunday morning worship, prayer and worship service. Amen. Because as we say, we have prayer at 10 to 11 and our service starts at 11 o'clock. If you would like to come and join us in person. Amen. Amen. But the word reminds us, wherefore laying aside all malice, all guile, all hypocrisies, all envies, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And so we have tasted that he is gracious. Amen. As the Bible said, don't taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. And he is good. So we praise him for his goodness and his mercy. We're still talking about the kingdom, amen, because we want to make sure we understand what the kingdom is about according to what the word of God. When Jesus first came, one of the first things he um, began to preach was the gospel of the kingdom, the good news of the kingdom. And what I like to say up front is, you know, because in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And we have to understand the kingdom of God has come, but it is coming. Amen. It came because as we've been studying, the kingdom of God doesn't come at this time with observation. You don't say low here, low there. You can't pinpoint a place where you can say there's the kingdom of God. Why? Because the kingdom of God is within his people. It's within us. So wherever we are, the kingdom is. And we have to remember that because as my wife was um, testifying, um, wherever we are, we are representatives of the kingdom of God. Amen. And so we are ambassadors. And so we have to behave ourselves as such. Amen. We don't just want to, when we come to this building, you know, we got to straighten up and fly right. No, you need to straighten up and fly right wherever you are, Amen. because Amen. wherever you are, the kingdom yeah. is. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so that's what we have to understand. But one day, one day, the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of heaven, is going to come to the earth. Amen. And he's going to establish his kingdom upon this earth. But if you want to be a part of it, then you've got to be a part of it now. Amen. You've got to accept God in the wilderness if you want to um, have him in the promised land. Amen. Jesus said, if you want to reign with me, you're going to have to suffer with me. Amen. And sometimes people want to um, jump on the, the wagon after you done got it rolling. They don't want to go through the suffering. They don't want to help you push it. But once you get it going and everything going, they're ready to jump right on. Amen. And some of them want to act like they've been there all the time. Amen. But that ain't the way it works with God and his kingdom. He said, you got to be willing to suffer with me if you want to reign with me. Amen. And saints, I want us to understand that suffering days are coming. Amen. They're coming. And, and, and we're living in some awesome times. See, a lot of stuff in prophecy, we wondered what it would look like. We are seeing what it's going to look like. How many have heard of the Fed coin? Anybody had heard of the Fed coin? Okay, nobody heard of the Fed coin because they ain't talking about it much. But the Fed coin is going to be a um, federal crypto. Wow. See, they, 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 they put this Bitcoin and all this cryptocurrency out there. They made it look like it was just roll. No, they were just testing the waters. Getting everybody used to doing transactions um, 
electronically. But now the feds are talking, and they've been talking about it, because I promise you it's been planned for years, but that they're going to eventually have a fed coin. They're working on it right now that's going to replace all the big coins, all of that. It's going to be fed coins. And your dollar bill that you carry around in your pocket is finna go bye-bye. <laughs> It's finna go bye-bye. You remember they was, when COVID first came out, they said COVID, they didn't want you using paper money because right. they said COVID can stay on the dollar bill for how many days and come to find out they weren't telling us the truth. Right. Right. Amen. But they just getting us, you have to understand what's going on. We are being prepared for something. Amen. And when, when um, Mother Turner sung that song, there's a storm out on the ocean and it's moving this way, you better get the revelation. It is a storm and it's out on the ocean. And well, it's, off, it's just about offshore now. <laughs> Amen. But it's moving this way. Amen. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to create a tsunami. Amen. And what a tsunami does, it rolls, that big water rolls in, and then it goes back out. And everything that it touches, if it ain't nailed down, if it ain't solidly nailed, even if it's nailed down, because you see houses floating away, it'll rip a house right off the foundation. Everything that is not secure, when it rolls out, it takes it with it. Amen. So um, we're about to see the perfect storm. I just want us to understand the Fed coin is out there. And this lines right up with what the Bible said, because we already been talking about the mark of the beast is going to be some sort of um, R-I, what is it, R-I-D-F chip? R R F I D chip in your right hand or in your forehead. When they start telling you we got to get it in your right hand and your forehead, you know, don't do it. Because these some of these preachers tell you once you take the mark of the beast, you can still be saved. No, you can't. Because the mark of the beast is more than just you taking a mark. It is you um, worshiping. See, if you take the mark, you're going to worship the beast and the dragon that gives power to the beast. Amen. And so we have to be aware of all this stuff, like Deke was talking about, how they was uh, seeking to vaccinate everybody. That ain't over. That ain't over. They, they already talking about the next pandemic. Okay, and they're going to come out. I was listening to some just yesterday. Um, that, um, who was that guy? What's the it, Gates? Talking about how. They're planning right now, and then they're seeking to give the, the the United States and all the other states give their power to to the world governing body, the UN, United Nations, so that they'll have power to. Uh, right now, individual states and countries can kind of say what they want to do, but as they're working, they're working to erase all of that. See, why why we why we worrying about who gonna win this and who gonna win that? They working to bring in this new world order. And so what I'm trying to help us to understand is in the new world order, it's not gonna matter how much money you got. Amen. Because if you don't take the mark, what did the book say? You won't be able to buy or sell. And the Fed coin is gonna make sure that happens. Because once they do the Fed coin, I can promise you eventually, they're going to get a universal money. So you'll have no more money in your pocket. You, it'll be on your smartphone. And just everything we're doing right now is getting us used to. How many pay, how many pay for stuff on your smartphone? Yeah. Some stuff. Yeah. See, it started with with uh, what, credit cards, yeah. got us used to that. And then, um, um, 
They got all these different kind of credit cards, but now you can pay stuff on your on your phone. You can do just about anything you want to do on these smartphones. And what and one of the things also that they're talking about is the banks are going to basically go away because um, the guy was explaining how it would work. You would basically have an account with the Federal Reserve yourself. You won't have that the bank as the middleman. But all your money is just going to be a blip on a computer screen. Therefore, if you don't act right, They already, it's already happening in China. They got credit scores in China to determine what you get and what you don't get. So we need to be aware because the Bible done already told us this stuff was going to happen. And so now we are seeing, do we realize how close we are to the coming of the Lord? We ought to get excited. I mean, I'm excited about it. But I'm understanding there is a dark period we're going to have to go through. And if you don't have enough faith, you're not going to make it. And this can happen in every one of our lifetimes. Because I keep telling this. You don't know what you're going to wake up to in the morning. Because they're doing this stuff while they're, um, they got you focused on something else. And remind me of what, <laughs> what I did one time. I wasn't saved. And I wasn't street smart. I come out to church, but my best friend, um, what's his name? I forget his name. He was street smart when we was in um, uh, Ross. Ross. And we was in uh, uh, Korea. And he was my best friend. And we both smoked. This day, neither one of us had no cigarettes. So, you know, anybody smoke, know, know the problem with that. <laughs> Amen. So we figured out, we didn't have no cigarette, and we ain't had no money. And so we trying to figure out how we're going to get some cigarettes. So all of a sudden, out of the blue, he said, come on, let's go to the store and get some cigarettes. So I'm thinking, dude must have got some money from somewhere. So we go in the store, he get the cigarettes, he put them on the counter. And then he walked and leave me at the counter with the cigarettes. He walked away, get the attendant's attention, and draws him away from the counter, asking him questions about something, and has his back turned to the counter. And all of a sudden, I see him going like this. And I was like, <laughs> and like a dummy, I grabbed the cigarettes and walked out the stuff. Now, I could have gotten some serious trouble over a pack of cigarettes. But the point that I'm making, the attendant was what? Distracted. That's how we was able to pull it off. Saints, we better wake up and stop being so easily distracted and pay attention to what's really going on. All this technology is not for your convenience. It is for your enslavement. We got cameras, what? Everywhere. Inflation. Look at, look at. You. Is there anywhere in Valera now that you can buy a, a gallon of gas for under $6? All of it mostly is over $6. And it shows no sign of slowing up. That's not an accident. That's not a natural occurrence. That is a purposeful thing that is being done. And they keep printing money and borrowing money and all of this. And the national debt is trillions of dollars. How long before the balloon pops? Are you ready for this? See, and that's why I'm saying you're going to have to have faith. You're going to have to believe that God can preserve you. Amen. Like he preserved um, Elijah when that great famine hit. And Elijah he put him in the wilderness by a creek and had the bird feeding him and, and the water supply. And when the water dried up, he sent him to the widow's house and then sustained him 
with the You're going to have to have that kind of faith. Yeah. And you're not going to get it sitting up watching TV all night, on your phone all night, Facebooks all night. You're going to get that kind of faith by getting in the Word and praying and seeking God and meditating on the Word of God. See, faith cometh by what? Hearing. hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. So you're going to have to be a doer of the Word to get in the Word. Because we hear saints. <laughs> they talking. How many heard the saying, uh, you will have nothing and be happy? How many have heard of the great reset? See, they're doing all of this. It's called the great reset, but they're going to reset the whole world. And you know what the reset is going to look like? The upper class and the lower class. The middle class as well. All they got to do, they just had another, what, well, that was a small crash they just had. But what happened when the bottom falls completely out? And you realize that your pension was tied to the market. What happened when the banks, it already happened, we're in a recession. Sooner or later, we're going to go to a what? Depression. We've been through one depression. And the difference this time is when, when, they, when they move us to cryptocurrency, I mean, a lot of people probably had taken their money out the bank and all of that, so they was okay during the depression. But when we're on crypto, you, you can't do all that. So things are changing. But God has given us his word to what? Prepare us for what's coming. Man, it's exciting to me because I'm, I want, I'm, I'm looking forward to the coming of the Lord. I'm, I'm about tired of this world. I'm, tell you the truth. <laughs> I'm about fed up with it. <laughs> but I know we still have a work to do. And you know what that work is? The harvest is plenty. But the labels. It's still souls that need to come in. That's the reason Amen. God ain't came in. He said, He's He said, He is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but he's long suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That's why he hasn't come yet, because there are yet souls to come in. But I want to encourage us, saying. That we we fine as long as you stay in Christ. Amen. You gonna suffer maybe physically. You know, this morning I I, I I just think like this sometimes. Every time I step in that shower about now, I be thanking God for that warm water because I know one day it's gonna be a cold shower. It might be. Might not be no shower. <laughs> You gonna be like we used to be when we was in the field. You, you, you know, you the the, the steel pot they put on their head. You put some water in that and wash the best you could. <laughs> Amen. But all, the, yeah. Well, boys probably don't know much about that. But <laughs> Amen. But but you got to understand this is reality. All this stuff they've been talking about, uh, what do they call it, uh, conspiracy theories? No, these are conspiracy facts. Because the Bible doesn't say it's going to happen. And we're going to deal with revelation because we're seeing it coming to pass right before our eyes. We've been wondering how this was going to happen. Now we know. But i got a good word for you. I want to enlarge on the scripture that we've been dealing with. Go to Hebrews. And we're going to look at a few more scriptures. Amen. Chapter 12. And we're going to begin again at verse 22. Hebrews 12 and 22. 
Because as I say sometimes, I'm not saying all of this to scare you. I'm saying it to prepare you. Amen. Because if you're not ready for him when he comes, it's going to be too late. When he comes, you ain't going to have time to get ready. If you're not ready, you're going to be lost. Amen. And as we teach here, it's not going to be a pre-trib rapture. It's going to be a post. If you, if you don't die, you're going to have to go through the tribulation because it is a purifying um, process for the church. Amen. The Bible says that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain until now. It's groaning and what? Travailing in pain until now. And it says it's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Because the Lord showed me, he said the earth is what? Full of the sons of God. Because the Bible talks about being born again from the dead. You know, that's what's going to happen at the resurrection. All that are dying in Christ are going to be born again from the dead. Amen. But the earth is travailing. That's why the earthquakes, all, everything is getting more intense and more frequently, just like birth pains, right? Because that's what's happening. Amen. And, and, and the Bible said, uh, the time of Jacob's trouble, that's the great tribulation, but it said out of it, out of that trouble, he's going to be delivered. That's birth in terms. So you have to understand what's happening. We have a benefit that the world don't have. And that is, we know what's happening. Most of the world don't really know what's happening. They don't really understand. You know, a lot of people that think, well, you know, the market cycles. It cycles, but at some point, it's going to stop cycling. At some point, it's just going to break. Because that's the way it's playing. But we know that. Okay. And I'm, and I'm going to teach a lesson on, on, on fear because how I many know fear is a spirit? Yeah. Amen. But guess what? God has not given us the spirit of fear. Yeah. <laughs> but of love and of power yeah. and of a sound mind. Yeah. That's, what, that's why whenever that spirit of fear try to grip you, you got to fight against it. You know yeah. that's an enemy because yeah. when you when you fearful, you would make wrong moves. Yeah. But I told my wife, I'm going to preach the message when the Lord released me. But Jesus told the man when, when he came and he needed his daughter to be healed. And while the man was talking to Jesus, the servant came and said, don't bother the master. Your daughter is gone. And before he can hardly get the words out of his mouth, Jesus said, fear not, only believe. Amen. Amen. Because nothing is impossible with God. Amen. He can do whatever he wants to do. Amen. Amen. And he's able, the Bible said, he's able to keep us even in famine. And so that's why you have to build yourself on your holy faith because fear and faith cannot stay in the same area. You have to have faith over fear. So I'm saying you fear not, only believe. And, 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 and take the word of God and, as a warning to help you but to prepare. Make sure you got enough word to last through all what we're going through. Now, where are we at? Hebrews chapter 12 and 22. We read it last week, but we want to go back over it because we want to lift up a certain portion of it to remind us of the hope that we have. Listen to what he said. But ye are come unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God. And what he said before, he described, he said, you're not coming to the mount that might be touched. Because under the law, everything was physical. And they were, they were physically brought to Mount Sinai. Okay. And they physically heard what the word, the words of God speaking from heaven. Everything was physical. And he said the sight was so fearful that Moses exceeding fear and quake. And he said, uh, nothing could touch the mountain because of the, that's where God was dwelling because of his holiness. 
They couldn't even touch the mountain because they were so unclean. Amen. He said if a, if if an animal touched the mountain, it had to be stoned or thrust through with a dart. It had to be killed. But he said, we're not coming to that mountain. Aren't you glad we're not coming to that mountain? Yeah. Amen. Because we are coming to a place in Christ Jesus where we, through Christ, can actually come into the presence of God boldly, without fear. Yeah. Why? Because, beloved, now we the sons of God, and doth not yet appear where we shall be, but we know when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Because when you allow God to purify your heart, and purify your mind, cleanse you of sin, you don't have to fear the judgment of God. Huh? That's what God is trying to teach us to understand. That's why I don't allow us to think that you cannot live free from sin because that is a necessity if you're going to be in the presence of God. Right now, some people don't, don't really pray, don't really get in the word because they, they, they still know they sin. They know they sinning. And the problem is, when you get in the word, it's like a mirror. It's going to show you you. <laughs> huh? But when you know your heart is clean, and your, your hands are clean, and your heart is pure, you look forward to entering into the presence of God. And I want you, if you're, if you're not clean, you can still come boldly asking God to what? Clean. Because we know he... The, we know the Bible said he hears not what? A sinner's prayer. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doth his will, and it's God's will that you repent of your sins, that you turn from him, come to him and ask him to cleanse your heart, cleanse your mind. You can't do it yourself, but he can do it. And he wants to do it. Now to him that is able to what? Keep you from falling and to present you high. Faultless. Without fault. Before his glory. That means he looking at you and can't find nothing wrong with you. Because of what? The, right, the righteousness of Christ. It's imputed into you. I learned something about guinea pigs a few years ago when um, my, my children, when they were younger, they wanted a pet. So they had to get one that mama was okay with. Mama was saying, no dogs, no cats. So they let, she let them get a bird. <laughs> and so finally we said, well, we'll get a, I think the first thing we was looking at was one of those, it's not a rat, but it's, what do you call it? Hamster. And I went and looked at them hamster and smelled them hamster. I said, this look too much like a rat and smell too much like one. I don't want no hamster. And so we looked at the guinea pigs and we said, okay, we're going to do guinea pigs. So we got the guinea pigs, so I began to do some research. One thing I found out about a guinea pig is they do not produce their own vitamin C. You have to make sure. they just like us because we don't. You have to get it from a what? Outside source. You got to make sure that they are eating things that have vitamin C in it for them to be healthy. Just like we have to do what? Eat things with vitamin C. And we have to be consistent. Amen. Well, let me help you with this. You can't produce your own righteousness. You have to eat stuff. <laughs> with righteousness in it. Blessed is he that what? Hunger and thirst after righteousness, for he shall be filled. We get our righteousness from our attachment to God through Christ Jesus. Amen? So we are not come unto the mount that might be touched. We are not under the law. We are under what? Grace. But grace is not a license to sin. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin 
Deacon said he talked a little bit about that the other night. You either dead in it or you're dead to it. You got to make a choice. But how shall we that are dead to sin, watch this, live any longer therein? Yes. If you dead to sin, you can't keep living it. I can't keep falling. I, and, and I thank God because, saints, when I teach the strictness of the word, I'm not teaching just from my physical knowledge of this word. I'm teaching from a spiritual relationship with this word that lets me know you can live free from sin. And, and I was thinking about it the other day. I don't, I don't cheat on my wife physically or mentally. I don't have no girlfriends even in my head. Amen. I ain't got none in my heart. Because a lot of folk, maybe you ain't physically cheating, but man oh man. You in the pornography, you a cheater. You a homonger. They ain't nothing but paper prostitute. Get the revelation. Male and female. The Bible said every idle thought that a man shall think he's going to have to what? Give That's why we got to clean up our minds. Right. We talked about the mind. And the way you clean up the mind is through the word. This right here will wash you clean. Yes. Body, soul, and spirit. Yes. So I'm not talking from a fictitious place. I'm talking from a place of experience. I was at a place in my life where I couldn't even buy a good thought. I heard one preacher say, some of us, you can't trust us around a barber dog. <laughs> you see a barber dog, you're talking about how fine she is. <laughs> Don't jump with me, laugh too hard, because we can't trust you around Ken. <laughs> Because your mind could get so perverted. But that's why we are so excited about the word of God. Because the word of God can clean you up. But you got to repent. You got to turn from your wicked ways. You got to stop doing stuff you was doing. See, the reason I got to that place is because what I was putting in. You can't put put the wrong thing in and expect the right thing to come out. Amen. You can't hang with fools and become wise. Amen. You running with fools, you're going to be a fool. Because that's where you're getting your information from. <laughs> but if you want to be wise, you got to hang with what? Wow. Wise men. Amen. Amen. That's what the Amen. Amen. That's why you, when you get saved, you got to make sure um, some of them old friends. You going to them old friends for counsel. What kind of counsel they going to give? You know they told you, they used to tell you, well, I mean, you, you, you probably need to lie about that. That's what they used to tell you. If they ain't changed, they going to still give you that information. Huh? But I'm taking the word of God for my counsel. So understand what God is telling us. Okay. You've not come. We're not under the law. We're under grace. But we don't sin. Because grace works in us the will and the do of his good pleasure. Okay. Now watch this. We might get to the scripture today. But we might not. We're not going to hold you too long today. But we are come, verse 22 again, unto Mount what? Zion. Unto the city of the living God, the what? Heavenly, Heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. A whole lot. We said last week, it's two-thirds of all the angels. See, because when God created the angels, he only created a certain amount of angels, and that was it. Angels don't have babies. 
So that little fat Cupid <laughs> baby with the arrow, yeah. that's a demon. Cupid is a, 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 a pagan god. Ain't no baby angels. And here's another one for you. Ain't no female angels. Because <laughs> sometimes I be in the store, you see them female angels? I never put a female angel in my house. I never put a angel, period. But understand what I'm saying. There are no female angels. Angels are really not male or female, but they always appear as God in the male gender. So if a female angel come to you, no, that's a demon. If a little baby angel come, better watch him. <laughs> Amen. You see how perverted the knowledge that we have been exposed to is? Amen. Amen. They made us, had us with the white the, the white man they called Jesus, that was a lie. Ain't no white man coming from down in that area. How you gonna stay white down there? Where he came from? Huh? Now we don't believe, I don't, I don't, we don't have no pictures. Why? Because they that worship God must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. Henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Though we have known Christ after the flesh, henceforth from now on know we him no more. So we don't look at him after the flesh, we look at him how? The spirit, and the spirit is not white or black. Well, we, well, we, well, I'm, I'm going to leave that alone for now because we do see what Jesus looks like. And he is. He got some color to him even now. But <laughs> let me keep moving. Amen. Because I'm trying to. But I want us. It, you see, this is why I miss Tuesday night, Tuesday and Friday night because I got so much to teach y'all. And that's why sometimes in Sundays just become a. The Lord, Lord bless. We're going to. The Lord's going to deliver us. This is what we're going through now because there's so much we need to know, Saint. How many know you have been terribly misinformed? Amen. Amen. And some of the stuff we need to know, some of the stuff, it don't really matter. Amen. But it's just like today is Juneteenth and most of us don't even really know what Juneteenth is all about. We just happy we get the day off. But it had to do with the slaves for two years in Texas were held in slavery. They had to send the army down there to free them. Yeah. And, and, and I was listening to some stuff and they was trying to say that what well, the masters, they might didn't know. They might didn't get the memo. They knew. The slaves didn't get the memo. The slaves didn't get the memo. But the masters knew. Amen. Because they didn't have all the forms of communication. But when they found out they were free. And they had to send the soldiers down there. Just like Jesus. Amen. That, that God had to send the angels and, and Jesus to free us. Amen. But we have to understand. Just like them. Because some of us still ain't got the revelation. That you's free. <laughs> <laughs> Huh? <laughs> you free. If you say you don't, you have to stop acting like you still in bondage. We used to sing a song. I used to love to sing. We used to sing a song. It said, the Lord delivered me. Why should I be bound? You know why we bound sometimes when we's really free? Because we don't get the memory. We don't understand. That's why I take time to teach us. Amen. You don't have to be a servant to sin no more. You have been made free. And that's why the Bible says, stand what? Fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. And be not entangled what? Again. With the yoke of bondage. I don't have to do pornography. It's a choice I make. I don't have to. 
what the Bible say, give no place to the devil. Don't you know you have power over the devil? Behold, I give you power over what? All the works of the end. Nothing by any means. Get the revelation. You don't have to do, you don't have to do nothing the devil tells you to do. You got a new master. <laughs> You under new management. Yeah. You know, some stores you stop going to because they were just a mess. And then one day you go by and say, oh, it's under new management. I believe I'll give them another try. Mm -hmm. Huh? You under new management. Yeah. Amen. So you don't have to obey the old master. Okay? Okay? So he says, but we are coming to Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, heaven in Jerusalem, unto an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of firstborn, which are written way in, in heaven, because the kingdom of God is the kingdom of what? Heaven. And that's why you have to be in the spirit. And that's what God is trying to teach us, how to live and to move in the spirit, not in the flesh. Amen. Physically, we're still attached to this earth, but spiritually, we've been elevated, been translated. Amen. So he said, be renewed way. Got to stop thinking the, like that old, old thoughts. Get in the word of God. Get your, get your mind renewed. I thank God he's renewing my mind more and more. And you know, the more he renews my mind, the less stuff I do in the world. Less stuff I watch, less stuff I listen to. Why? Because I, I, I begin to realize, well, this ain't even part of the kingdom, so why am I indulging in it? But this do it puts me in the flesh. I hate to be in the flesh. The more you get in the spirit, the more you're going to hate the flesh. The flesh is nasty. I mean, you just like to be dirty, don't you? No, no, you want to be clean. Amen. I never forget when I was in the military. We came in from Bivouac. We had been out there for a week taking them, um, them little uh, steel pot, cleaning up bird baths. And when we, when, when we finally came in, you could smell us walking. And boy, when they got us in front of that building and said fall out, most of us was racing to get that shot. Because we didn't like being what? It was one country boy. He was probably used to not. Because some of them, I mean, y'all used to watch the, 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 the westerns where they take a bath, what, a week, a month? This one, and, and we, we called him Gomer Pyle because that's kind of was his mentality. But do you know he wasn't stunned by getting in the street? He just was, he, he wasn't stunned. And the people in his room, they was like, uh uh. They went to the, to the sergeant, they said, he don't want to take a shower. The sergeant said, well, y'all hear me. Anybody in the, in, in the military know they put his, they took him, they didn't even take the clothes off. They put him in the shower with a scrub brush and they started scrubbing him. He took a shower then. All I'm saying is most people want to be what? So how is it that so many of the saints is okay being dirty? In the spirit. When, when your mind get where God trying to get it, if you just have an evil thought, you be wanting to wash that thought out. I've tried to watch something. Something I was watching for, for uh, information purposes, but it, it had some kind of 
stuff in it. I stopped watching it because I said, I don't want this in my spirit. And I had to get that out of my spirit. Because when your spirit is clean, you can, you, can, uh, you can tell the difference when something is trying to soil you. We got to get to that place where we hate sin. I'm not talking about hating everybody else's sin. I'm talking about you hate your sin. Hey man, I can deal with yours better than I can deal with mine. I, I don't like no sin in my life. I don't like the way it make you feel. Huh? Sin will embarrass you. This is what he said. Verse 23 again, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven, to God the judge of all. This is where we have come. God the judge of all and to the spirits of just men, what? Made perfect. Made perfect. Those that have overcome and that are in that heaven, in the heavens. The Bible talks about them in Revelation chapter 6. They're up there and the Bible says they were Asking God, how long before you judge the people that are on the earth because they shed our blood? And the Bible says that uh, white robes was given unto them. And he told them that um, they should rest yet a little while until the brothers that should suffer as they suffer should be accomplished. Um, check that phone, make sure that they know. It's up, it's good? Okay. I heard a ding. I didn't know if it was mine. Okay. Because then once you, if you make it to heaven now, because heaven is a temporary place just like hell is a temporary place. If you die right now to be acting from body to be present with the Lord, where? In heaven. But one day heaven is going to move to earth. That's what we're going to, we're going to eternally abide. But right now, you go to heaven. If you if you if you die right now, and, but you have to. This is what he said: the souls of just men made perfect. Because you ain't gonna get in there if you ain't made perfect. But that's where we have been brought to. Now there's a deep revelation in that. If you've been brought to the place of perfection, we can be what. Made perfect. If we've been brought to the place, and that's where we are. But the, again, you have to think like this. You have to change the way you think. You know how I got to this place, and I ain't in a perfect place yet. I ain't there because I, um, I allowed myself to be captivated by certain things of the world, but now I'm getting back to the place where I was because it's, it's nothing there. But the way I get, got to this place where I am right now, like I said, I used to, used to couldn't buy a good thought. Sometimes be on my rock, just evil thoughts just coursing through my mind like a, a, a river. But now, that ain't the case. I don't have no bunch of negative thoughts. And matter of fact, when the negative thought comes, we deal with it quickly. But it wasn't always that way, but I had to fight my way back through this right here. That's why I put such emphasis on us getting in the word, getting the word in us, praying, fasting. So that we can be in this what? Because what we've been brought is to a heavenly place in Christ. To the souls of just men made perfect. This is where we are. Now listen, look at verse 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. Now I ain't going to lie and tell you, I seen Jesus. All these people talking about they done seen him. I went to heaven and I saw Jesus. I didn't go to heaven and I didn't see Jesus. But by faith, I'm in a heavenly place. And by faith, I behold him. The Bible says, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. When I understand where I've been brought, then it changes how I act. 
I can be sitting in the in the uh, in the airport, but I'm in a heavenly place in Christ Jesus because my mind is elevated. I ain't caught up. And you notice how they got these TV monitors everywhere. That's a purpose. It's a purpose for that. Amen. Because once they get everything to where they want it, your basketball is gone, your baseball is gone, your football is gone, all that is gone. The monitor is going to be used to indoctrinate you and to make sure you stay indoctrinated. If you saw some of these movies, what, what would come with them? The, the talking head, the propaganda, that's what Hitler did. He used the, the radio for propaganda to keep the people's mind thinking that they were winning the war when they was losing it. He, he um, trained the people to hate the Jews and to hate other people because of the propaganda. We've been trained to accept stuff that the Bible tells us not to accept. We accept homosexuality. Amen. Um, we accept before we accepted homosexuality, saints, let me help us. Before we accepted homosexuality, we were accept, accepting fornication, accepting adultery, accepting all this stuff that the Bible teaches against. I always say, when we get to the point where we accept homosexuality, that's the straw that breaks the camel's back. Because the Bible says that is an unnatural act. Fornication is natural in a sense when it's between a man and a woman because fornication is a catch-all sexual perversion term. But when a man and a woman getting together, that's natural. But to me, that's like you have two nuts and two bolts. It don't, don't work. You need a nut and a bolt. So that's unnatural. But before we get to that point, we had to go through a, a breaking down of our morals. And that's what we're seeing. That's why America's going to be destroyed. God re reminded me. You know why California so dry can't get no rain? Too much sin. The Bible says it. He withholds when the when 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 the nation gets too weak. He told Israel, "Why do you think you ain't getting the rain that you used to get? Because you sinning too much. <laughs> the rain was put on a cycle. It's supposed if it, everything was natural, every season would be perfect." We would get the amount of rain every season we need. We would get, how much rain have we not gotten? Because of Californication. <laughs> That's why we got the praise sign. And I believe God said that we're going to have revival in the land. That's why Amen. we're praying. Amen. That's why we're seeking God. Amen. And that's what we have to believe. Uh -huh. in God, because we need help. Yes. The church needs help. Because the church ain't ready. Because we done forgot where, where we are. <laughs> we, done, we done messed up the, the true nature of the kingdom. And we made it meat and drink. But it's not meat and drink. It's righteousness, joy, and peace where? In the Holy Ghost. For he that in these things serveth Christ is acceptable with God and approved the man. We done made it money and houses. All of these things that are fading away. But let me get to this point. So, verse 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of what? The new covenant. Moses was the mediator of the old covenant. Moses brought them to Mount, the physical Mount Sinai. Then Moses alone what went up into that 
quote unquote him in the place up into the mountain. He had to go by himself. He couldn't take the people with him. I want you to get this revelation. He had to go by himself. And then he had to bring the law back down to him. But look what Jesus did. Because he's the mediator of the New Testament. He didn't just go up by himself. He went up, got the law, brought it back down to us, and then did what? Put it in our hearts so that we could what? <laughs> so why are we so comfortable down here? In, I'm talking about on a spiritual level. Why are we so comfortable in this low place? When he went through all of that, Moses couldn't take them back up with him. But Jesus said, when, you remember what the Bible said? When Jesus, after he died, went into the grave three days later, he came back up. And then after he was seen of, of men for what, 40 days? But when he went back up, the Bible said when he ascended, when he rose, what happened? The graves were open, and the bodies of the righteous dead were seen walking through the streets of somebody's like, Mama. And she just walking because she's like, I ain't got time, baby. I'm on my way. Because <laughs> huh? when he rose, he took all the righteous dead with him. You know, there were two compartments in hell. The righteous compartment and the wicked compartment. We know that because the Bible said when the um, Lazarus died, he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Okay. But that was a compartment in hell. But when the rich man died, what happened? In hell, he lifted up his eyes. He didn't even have an angelic escort. He just fell in the hell. But when he looked across and he saw Lazarus, yeah. <laughs> he, he was saying, Father Abraham, yeah. could you just let Lazarus, I know I did him wrong, but could you just let him dip the tip of him? We better get to revelation. If you, if you hot, thirsty, how many would be okay just dipping it, somebody dipping the tip of their finger in That, that shows right there exactly how desperate he was. Yeah. Just dip the tip of his finger. Now in life, he cast them out there with his dogs, but now he want his, his finger yeah. in his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. As I tell you, hell is going to be for y'all think it's going to be a party. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. It's going to be terrible. But God is giving you a chance right now. Amen. But what did Abraham say? Not so. Because there's a great gulf fixed. We can't go to you and you can't come to us. But that had to be torment for those in, in, in the tormenting part of hell to be able to look over at those that are resting. Yes. <laughs> say, oh man, if I had just lived right. If I had just accepted the law of Moses and obeyed it, I could be over there. But it was what? Too late. Amen. So he said, well, could you at least send him back to talk to my, my brothers? Um, so they don't come to this place? What did he tell them? They got Moses and the prophets. What was he saying? They had the Old Testament. He said, yeah, but, but if, if one went from the dead, they would hear him. You know what he said? He said, if they don't hear Moses and the prophet, neither will be, they be convinced if one returned from the dead. That's why I don't give a lot of credence to all these folks that I died and went to hell. Because most of the time, if you've ever read what they say when they died and went to hell or when they died and went to heaven, it's different from what the Bible says. 
If I die and go to heaven, I'm expecting to see what the Bible says. If I die and go to hell, I expect to see what the Bible said was going on. So, please hear me when I'm saying. God has brought us to a whole nother place, saints. And if you're not saved, this is a good day to get saved. So God can begin to bring you to this place. So he said, Jesus, the verse 24, the media of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaking better, speaking better things than that of Abel. Okay? Now, this is what he says, see that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Because this next shaking is going to be both heaven and earth. And the Bible says the stars are going to fall like uh, figs falling off, overripe figs falling off the tree. Okay. Verse 27. And this word yet once more signifying what did he say? The removing of those things that are shaken and the things that are made, watch this, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Do y'all feel the shaking? Everything is being shook up. Just, just, I mean, it seems like everything has been fast-tracked since 2020. Seems like it's really been fast-tracked because every year since 2020, at the, virtually at the beginning of the year, we have some major event. This year, what happened? The war um, when, when um, you, Russia attacked Ukraine, and they still over there decimating Ukraine. That's major. That ain't like when we went and attacked Iraq and these other people. And, and I was listening to this one guy. He was saying, uh, yeah, America, we ain't really had no real uh, serious foes. We ain't really fought none yet. I mean, since like World War II. Uh, and maybe since what, the Korean War maybe? Vietnam? But these folk we've been fighting, they're not contenders. All right? Uh, those, those little countries over there, they ain't got nothing to threaten us. But you fool with Russia and see what happens. That's heavyweight. That's a world power. And I was listening to him talk. I didn't even know this. But Russia don't need nobody to sustain her. Russia's so vast, she got everything she needs. We need her and the Ukraine to, with the wheat, all of that, a lot of stuff we get from them. But they can sustain themselves. So putting sanctions on them, what are you doing? You hurting everybody but them. That's what it was being said. They ain't hurt. <laughs> See? But when you understand what's really going on, it ain't supposed to hurt them. It's supposed to hurt us. Because they're trying to um, destroy America so that they can bring in the new world order. But the Bible then already said it. Amen. But, so that's what we are seeing. Everything is what? Shaking. And everything that can be removed is going to be removed. Are you removable? Are you removable? See, that's why that's why God, yesterday I believe it was, he started bringing that scripture to me. He said, therefore be what? Steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know your labor is not in, in is not in vain in the Lord. That's not the one he brought. The one he brought is the one I said earlier where he says um, about standing fast in the liberty 
where Christ has made you free. And don't be entangled again. Be steadfast. No matter what comes or what goes, you got to be firm in the word. If you lose everything, make sure they don't get your faith. Because if they got your faith, if they get your faith, they got you. If, if, if the devil could have got Job's faith, Job wouldn't recover. But I want you to see this, and I want you to get this revelation. Okay? Look, look what he said. So everything's going to be shaken. They can be shaken. It's going to be removed. And the only thing that's going to remain is the things that cannot be shaken. And those are the things that are where? In Christ. Now look at verse 28. Wherefore we receive in a kingdom which what? Cannot be moved. Cannot be moved. Because it's not of this world. It's not from here. It's in heaven. They can't touch it. The Bible says that our inheritance is undefiled. It's, um, it's three things. Undefiled. I, I couldn't think of the other three things. It's in Peter though. But we receive an inheritance that is sure. The Bible says store your treasures where? in heaven where moth and rust can't corrupt and where thieves can't break through and steal. Because these thieves down here, they'll take your money out your bank account. They can steal whatever you got down here. Even, and, and, and if y'all really, I don't know if I say this because I don't want to get in, in jail again. So maybe I won't say it. I tell y'all that off, off screen. <laughs> I don't like going to jail. Somebody might need to hear this on YouTube. So we won't say that. Because I, 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 don't, I don't know. But, but understand what I'm saying. Sometimes. If it's spiritual in Christ, it's sure. I preached a message at a funeral not too long ago where I said, uh, prepare to live, not ready to die. And it talks about the rich man who's um, fields brought forth much, so much that the barns that he had built couldn't hold it. So he said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull those barns down and I'm going to build bigger barns and there I'm going to bestow my goods. And then I'm going to chill, kick back and say, you have much good laid up for years. Eat, drink and be merry. Just enjoy yourself. And then the voice came from heaven and said, Thou fool, this night your soul is required of you. Then who shall those things be that you prepare? This night. Because he was prepared to live, but he wasn't ready to die. Death is sure. Life is uncertain. Amen. Have you ever seen where somebody you was expecting to die before some, and then other folks was dying before them, and they just seem like they just keep living. <laughs> seem like they indestructible. I'm thinking about one mother right now, was sickly most of the time. I knew, but she's still living, and other folks are dead and gone, and she's still living. We thought maybe she'd been gone by now, though. Know? Because you don't go nowhere until God's here. But life is uncertain. But death is sure. That's why it makes sense to prepare for what is sure. Just in case what is unsure. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay. But the kingdom of God is cannot be moved. Make sure you're in the kingdom. Because once all of this stuff is done, behold, I saw what? A new heaven and a new earth. Where it dwelleth righteousness. Amen. But you got to be a part of this kingdom right now. Listen to what he said. Wherefore, we receive in the kingdom, verse 28, which what? Cannot be moved. Let us have what? Grace. Grace. This is the good news. The kingdom of God that we're in can't be moved. 
When everything is shaking, when everything else is moved, the kingdom of God is going to still be standing. The Bible said, upon this rock I build my church, and the gates of hell, the council, that's what it means when it said the gates of hell, the gates was where they took counsel. The men took counsel. The gates of hell, he said, shall not prevail against them. And don't you know all the counsel that they're taking against the saints? And that's what I want us to understand too, saying The counsel is really against us. It's us against the world. I know it looks like all these different nations are fighting one another. Ultimately, they're going to get together and you're going to be the problem. That's why we got to learn to love one another. Because the Bible said when that happens, some of us going to be betraying others of us. You better get, get in the book. Man, that's why you, you can't trust nobody. Some folk I thought, I, I told my wife, I'm going to stop thinking about folk. <laughs> but you be thinking certain things about people. And then the next thing you know, you're like, oh, I didn't know that. Because if God don't show you, you don't know. So I had to learn, God, you reveal people to me so I'll know what I'm dealing with. So I'll know how to handle stuff. Amen. People that I've known for years, I know one person I'm thinking about, I knew them for years and thought they were straight as an arrow. I thought they was just, come to find out they crooked as Lombard Street. <laughs> Amen. But you know the one person you can trust? <laughs> Amen. So, he said, let us have what? Grace. And, and how do we get grace, somebody? Prayer. Prayer. Let us come boldly before the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and grace to help win in time of need. So, we have a kingdom that can't be moved, but we need grace to abide in it. We need to pray. And, and, and my wife says she's going to be doing some um, teaching on prayer because we need to understand men are to what? And not what? Always pray, not faint. When you faint, you lose consciousness. You're not aware. When, when you're conscious, you know you need God every second of the day. Amen. But we receive the kingdom that what? Cannot be moved. Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear because without grace, you cannot serve God in an acceptable manner. God don't want your little nasty fleshly worship. He don't want it. He that worship God must worship him high. Spirit and in truth. That can only happen in Christ. Okay? So, let us so pray saying, you struggling? Ask God. God will help. I ask God all the time, Lord, everything in me does not like you up. And then I want him to reveal it to me. So I'll know to keep it out. Because sometimes, you know, you know how, how when you eat something and then you break out in hives or get sick. And, and you were like, what, what was it that I ate? You trying to figure out what it was, right? So you'll know what. <laughs> Because I found out that, you know, because I get off, I start work some, at, at 8.30, get off um, most days 9, 10 o'clock. So I was, sometimes my wife cooked some of them good old pinto beans with ground turkey in them and some cornbread. Ooh, Lord, that mess. <laughs> That, that jiffy with honey in it. No, I ain't got no business. 
I eat a whole half a pan of it. Don't mess with me. Huh? But you know what? You know what I found out that stopped me from doing that at 9 and 10 o'clock at night? About, about 2, 3 in the morning, I got heartburn. I said, them beans, they good, but they ain't that good. When that heartburn started hitting me, is anybody hearing what I'm saying? You got to, you got to know what's giving you spiritual heartburn. <laughs> What you just watched that's causing you to have them the nasty dreams. Are you following me? We flip it to the spirit. You got to make sure that you put the right stuff in. That's going to nourish your spirit. Okay. Now why did he tell us all this? Last verse. For our God is what? As I always say, ain't nothing changed. He'll either consume all the sin out of you if you let him, or he'll consume you with your sin. You got to make up your mind which one you want. Now let's give God some praise for his word on today. We have a kingdom that cannot be moved. I don't care what's going on in the world. You hold fast to God. Build yourself up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Knowing that all things are working hard. Together for good to them that what? Love God and are the what? Called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for those that are joined by Facebook, later by YouTube. Pray that you have a blessed day. Amen.